In this video, we're going to show you how to play a par 3, a par 4 and a par 5 and break 90 every time you play. And we're going to do it now. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to show you how to break 80 every single time. Oh, that's what the fans want. That's what they want. Chris, we're going to have a little bit of a match while we do so. Yep. We're here at Wortley Golf Club. It's a stunning morning. October's What's your first morning. tip, Chris, for people who are struggling to break 90? So first tip, one of the big things I see is people don't use the tee box to their advantage. So they get onto a hole, they tee up in the middle, they don't take into account if it's sloping or not, and they don't take into account where they're trying to hit. So here on this hole, I've come to the left-hand side of the tee box, so I can then aim for the middle of the green and I'm hitting towards the middle. I'm not hitting away from the middle if I was on the right-hand side of the tee box. So using that to get a better start line to guarantee that we're going to hit the target that we're intending. Right, we're going to have a little bit of a match while we go through these tips, so I'll let you have the honour. Right, so 9-9 nine, nine here, little controlled one instead of trying to hit something full, which I know is something you was going to mention. Lovely silhouette, that, Chris. Silhouette. Lovely strike. Oh, that's delightful. So I aimed at the middle, slightly pulled that one, but because I've aimed at the middle, it's gone to a nice solid five foot. So the first tip I'm gonna give you guys is to make sure you hit enough club. This is a par three, ninth hole, 127 yards. And so often if I'm playing with a golfer on a playing lesson or just a friend who's trying to break 90, maybe like Foxy, they don't hit enough club here. They think oh, 127 yards, I can probably hit a sand wedge here. I can maybe just about get there with a sand wedge. I'll tell you now, Chris didn't hit a sand wedge and I'm not hitting a sand wedge. I'm gonna hit a nice full pitching wedge. I think Chris even chipped a nine iron there, did you, Chris? Yep, a little bit more control on that and try to just flight it in. And you'll swing easier. And you'll find a lot of these tips are about keeping that golf ball under a bit of control. Like that. So guys, you'll see two pretty good tee shots here on the opening hole, the ninth par three. Chris is a little bit closer than me, but the big thing here, if you are trying to break 90, is to hit a couple of greens in regulation. Obviously, 80 would generally be 18 over par for most par, all par 72s. 80 or 90? 18 would be 90, wouldn't it? Yeah. Exactly. So 89 would be 17 over par. Correct, I thought you said 80. So you're going to need to make a par at some point, obviously. To make a par, you're more than likely going to do so if you hit a green in regulation rather right. than relying on a chip in. And hitting the right club off the tee is going to give you more likelihood to do so. Yeah, and very much we've seen over time, you more so than me at this golf course, but people leaving themselves short, lands on the down slope, kicks through the back of the green here, and you've got a very tricky shot up and over that nobody wants. And from a hole that's 127 yards off the back tees, why make it so hard for yourself? Pick the club that's going to get on the green, land and stay on there. Right. I'll have a putt first, Chris. Now, to shoot 89, you're going to need a couple of pars, but you don't need to go for birdies, not necessarily, unless you're towards the end of the round and chasing it. So I'm going to have a little go at this. I'm going to make sure I don't send it too far past, because then that's going to be quite a stressful par putt that generally I don't need nor want. Turn, turn, turn. Oh. You can see there, that's just the right pace. It's about a foot past. That's generally the pace you want on a birdie putt so you're not left with something too long for par. And you can have a nice stress-free tap in for that par. Exactly, so on those, James was downhill. What I see a lot of people do is they don't want to blast it past, they want the par. They get a little bit tentative. Like James says, if you're a foot past, at least you can see what the putt has maybe done after the hole and you know it's only short and a little bit of a tapping. This so, to go one up, Chris. This to go one up. Oh. A misread, but a very easy par. Let's go on to the par five. Right guys, that is the par three out of the way. That's nicely navigated with a par. Chris, we're moving on to the par five now. Yep. And this brings us on to what should you be hitting off the tee on these long holes. Do I go driver? Do I need to hit driver? Or can I get away with hitting something a bit less? Yeah, that's it. You've got to think, is there a club in your bag you're more comfortable with off a tee? You know, is it a three wood that you're a little bit more comfortable with? Even with a three wood, you're still going to be able to get there. 90% of golfers are going to be able to get there still in three blows. So think about what you're more confident with, get it down there. 
get yourself being able to be still in the hole and not in the trees. For me, driver, although I don't have a T. So the fairway slopes left to right here. So again, I favoured the right hand side of the T and I'm going to take a more direct line up the left hand side to allow that to count it to count it down or run down and use the contours. Perfect that. So right up the left hand side. Nice big bounce to the right. Lovely. So I'm going to hit driver here as well. This is a par five. It's a fairly wide fairway. Generally, I think to shoot 89, to break 90 every time, you want a club in your bag that you know is going to hit the fairway. And I'll discuss that because the next par four is a rather tight tee shot, which might cost a lot of you in that pursuit to break 90. On the par five though, I'm going to let the shoulders open and get down there to try and maybe make another par, worst case bogey, and it's not a scorecard wrecker. A big part of trying to break 90 every time is picking and choosing your battles. It's picking when to take that risk, when to take a shot that maybe you're not 100% comfortable with, but you feel like you need to take it, and when just to take your medicine, hit an iron down there, and keep that golf ball in play. So I've actually just veered off the fairway, quite unluckily really, and drawn a bad lie. Chris, you're up on the right-hand side. Are you going to be able to go for that in two? Yeah, I've got a good lie. There's not much grass in between a ball and club, so I'm going to have a go for it. But this is a lie we see a lot from amateurs. They know it's a par five. They've hit a great drive, and they're starting to think, right, well, I can get my, uh, get my hybrid to that. And then we see the classic of where it just snags in the grass and it goes about 50 yards and then they've yeah. still got a 150 shot in so the answer to this is to get some loft on it and all i'm going to do i'm going to hit a nice pitching wedge something with a bit of loft on there and get it back into play that's it get it back in the fairway probably on the left hand side so then you can hit straight towards the flag so again guys it's about considering when to take that risk and when to just accept that you've got a little bit unlucky and just take a little bit of medicine that's out there. There's no way I could have got any more loft to that. Perfect. Now these are all simple tips that people might be thinking, well, obviously I'm not going to try and hit a hybrid out there, but you'll be amazed as to what we have seen before mm. in playing lessons and pro-ams and things like that. Yeah, and here very much the decision is if you've driven the ball to where I am or a little bit back, you've got to decide the trouble is the bunkers. Nobody likes that mid-range long bunker shot. So you either want to know or guarantee that you can carry all of the bunkers. If you can't, for me, I would be suggesting to lay up of that trouble and leave yourself a 90 yard shot. Even if in. it's only 180, 200 yards, you don't always have to try and hit that shot. No, even if you chip something down there and just got a pitching wedge or even a five iron and just got that and running down the fairway, as long as it's short of the trouble, then you've got a better chance of hitting the green and not getting a large score on your scorecard. Lovely shot. Yeah, it just clipped the trees actually, but it's left side, so clip, that's fine. Clip the trees, drop down, so I've got a good uh, chip to the uh, hole. Now, although we're telling you to consider what risks to take and things like this on the golf course, sometimes you do have to attack. Sometimes if you've hit your best drive and you feel like you can get there, go for it. Yeah, definitely. If you can get there and you know you can carry it and you want to get up near the green, or if you're confident in a mid-range mid bunker shot, or go for it. Get, get yourself down there, give yourself a chance. Because like we said, you want to be hitting some greens in regulation to then be able to have those couple of pars that are going to get you breaking 90. So you can see here my wedge shot from the roof, it's in the middle of the fairway, it's short of the bunkers, everything that we described, and it should just about leave me with a nice wedge shot into this par 5 green. I'm not going to go with too much loft, I'm just going to send a nice gap wedge in there, play for the middle of the green. The flag is on the right, so if I miss this flag to the right, it's going to go down a little swale, then all my good work has been undone. So middle of the green, about 80 yards. And that should leave me with another birdie putt, and at worst, a par. You'll see here, guys, that so far on the par three and par five, very much plotting our way down these holes instead of trying to attack them. And we're gonna get out of here with a couple of pars, if not maybe a birdie. This is how you can break 90 more consistently, and even start to get down in the low 80s, one day, maybe even the 70s. So my ball there, safely in the middle of the green, that's a birdie chance, and like we said, worst case scenario, a par. 
Chris, your second shot finished here. Yeah, so just clipped the top of that tree, as we probably heard on the video, but you see there that was still carrying past the trouble. So I knew with a yeah. five iron, I was still gonna be able to carry it past the trouble. Worst case scenario, I'm chipping towards the flag. I made sure that the left side was the miss, and now I've got a relatively straightforward chip shot to give myself a chance. Nice. So give yourself a chance, eight feet. We'll try, if not, it's a very easy par. Out of interest, Chris, what club did you use there for people wanting to break 90? So again, they're not too much loft. We had something to go over, but I used my 56. So I knew it was gonna land on the green, but then it would continue to run forwards. One of the biggest things I see with your amateurs trying to break 90, they use too much loft there. It lands very soft on the green and you leave yourself a 30 footer. So two birdie putts again, Chris has the shorter of the two putts. So important to stick to your routine guys, no matter what you putts for, if it's for a birdie or if it's for a par, try and get that read, get the speed right. And you're never really going to risk three putting as much. Go. Ah. Tentative, but again, that's as easy a par as you're going to make. Very disappointed not to get that a foot past. But it was easy enough. Yeah. So one of the big things I see from amateurs when you get on, if you're trying to break 90, there's no structured routine. So we've lined this up. So I've took my time, ready, lined it up. And then we want to focus on the pace. So having a little bit of a practice swing, visualizing how hard and how much swing we need to put on that. And then in and pull the trigger. Again, for me, consistent. I've pushed two putts, something to work on, but it's very easy now for me to walk up. I'll be a little bit disappointed. It's terrible camera work for me, by the way. <laughs> Good shadow. At least you didn't kick the camera. Yep. So one thing to take out of that as well is not to beat yourself up too much. If you do miss a birdie putt, if you do make a mistake, making mistakes happens to all of us, however big or small, but it's important not to let it bother you walking onto the next hole, Chris. Both of us could have maybe had a chance of making birdie there, yeah. but... But I think that's it. A lot of amateurs beat themselves up. You know, if they bogey a hole, they could have parred. It drags on for three or four holes and it gets worse. Okay, why did you make that bogey? If you three putted, what was it? Was it your pace? Okay, just take a little bit more time over your pace, you know, stick to a routine and break down why you've missed and then you can move on. If you think you know why, you can forget about it on the next tee and play the next hole as a new hole. So guys, final hole of this video and it's the par for 357 yards. Not overly long, but a quick tip, if you can see an overview of the hole, take a look at that, see where you want to be, see where you don't want to be and also use that to determine what club you're going to hit off the tee. So for me, I've gone five iron here. What I see a lot of times is people think par four, it has to be a driver. You know, par four means driver. Here, the percentage play for you is probably going to be a hybrid, maybe a three wood max, not a driver. That driver is going to bring in the trouble. For me, five iron is going to leave me probably 130 yards in, a nice little nine iron controlled, hopefully. And I mean, I'm taking variables out of it. I'm making it as easy as possible to hit that green and again, walk away with the lowest score possible. Yeah, nice. So easy swing down the left hand side and I can hit straight towards the green. In keeping what Chris is saying there, I'm gonna take my driving iron. This is a club which I feel like I can hit most fairways with. I'd love to take a driver here. I'd love to maybe try and make a roaring birdie or even a par. But for me, I know this is going to get me in play. I can play a nice little knockdown shot with it and just leave myself a shot to the green. And again, take out those variables of maybe missing the fairway right or left. Nice. Wonderful. So again, here, similar to the par three and par five, on the par four, we're thinking about the risk. We're thinking about what is the reward if I do take driver? Is it going to give me that much more chance of making a birdie or a par on this hole probably not they're things that you have to weigh up if you're going to break 90 every time so miss the fairway but because i've used the correct iron it's left me far enough back if i'd have used for me a three wood i'd probably tended to be right behind that tree no real shot i'd be having to you know manipulate something to get near to the green so here just 160 into the green so the five iron didn't go as far as i thought but we can easily get over that tree on the green. 
the bush out. Oh, how good is that now? Nice and easy, five iron, nine iron, I'm trying to make it easy. So I managed to find the middle of the fairway with my tee shot there. I'm taking a note of where the 150 marker is, which is there. I'm also going to have a look at the flag, which is a yellow flag. As you can see, that connotates that the flag is in the middle of the green. I can tell visually it's in the middle of the green as well. Bush on it, we've got 155, that's a nice eight iron for me. Again, I'd see some amateurs here would try and hit a full nine, they'd try and maybe chip a seven. I know that 155 is a stock eight iron for me. So quite happy just to hit, as the pros might say, a driving range eight iron. Nice shot. Lovely. Another thing I've took into account there is the lie. The ball was slightly above my feet. These are things which can cost you shots if you don't know. If the ball's above your feet, it's gonna work slightly to the left. If the ball's below your feet, it's gonna go the other way slightly to the right. All these little things add up to help you break 90 every time. That's if you're a right-handed golfer. He's forgot about all you left-handed golfers. Horrible individual. So you can see that I'm at the back of the green there. That's another green in regulation, even though it's not close to the flag. Chris, yours finished just a bit short. Yeah. What advice would you give here for the shot? So a lot of people here I see will get the putter out because they're like, oh, it's short-sided. I'm a bit nervous, a bit twitchy. But this morning, very wet, still a lot of dew on the ground. So when you play in the winter, the grass is going to be wet. It's very hard to judge pace control from off the green. So. Here, all I've got is a nine iron. We've skipped out the wedges and the 60 degree, which again, people would quickly go to. I'm gonna get it nice and tall, treat it like a putter, and just make a nice easy motion. It lifts it up and then rolls out. And there we go. Playing percentages. Correct. And I'm sure there are a few people in the comments saying that's all good and well, you two are both pros. You can play these shots, but the reason we're pros is that we do the simple things right. We don't make as many silly mistakes as potentially people like Foxy or Spriggsy or all due respect, people who maybe aren't quite at that level. Yeah, and I think that's it. We're going for a lot more. You've watched, you watch a lot of golf on TV. You see all the best shots on TV. They don't show you how they recover. You know, we miss still a lot of greens, a lot of fairways. We've not hit them all. But then it's about making sure we can get as close to the flag in the least amount of shots by doing whatever is the easiest way to do it. All right, so lengthy birdie put myself here. Percentage make rate here wouldn't be very high at all, but again, I'm going to stick to my routine. I'll give you that, Chris. Well, thank you very much. And I'm going to make sure I do my best just not to three put from here. And this is one thing I don't see much from amateurs is when they practice putting, they always practice around the hole, holding out, which is, is very important still. So one thing I don't see a lot from amateurs who are trying to break 90 is practicing long putts and pace putting on the practice putting green. You're often around the hole trying to hole out, practicing your short ones, but you're going to get a lot of these putts and it's very important to visualize like James is there, getting a good feel of how much swing he needs for this putt and then stepping in quickly, get the ball rolling foot and that's passed. again, foot pass. That's a nice tapping for James, but it's something that I know James practices on the putting green before he goes out occasionally. But that's what I'd like to see more from amateurs. Practice your pace putting, don't just practice holding out because you're going to save more by two putting and not three putting. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That was a video on how to play par threes, par fours and par fives and break 90 every single time. Chris, thank you so much for your time. No problem, but guys, if you want to look into some more course management videos, if you come over to my channel, there is a playlist just for course management, and we talk through the same kind of things and different shots you might want to play. Just in a bit more depth. Guys, I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.